Hello my friends and welcome to today's tarot reading. This is a general daily reading for all signs, but the sign that you're here probably means that there is a special message for you. So thank you so much for joining me today. Now apologies, I am in a different location um, today. Um, that's because I'm on the move, but I'm still here and I've been a little bit late so I thought, you know what, I need to get this out to you ASAP. So here I am. Um, today I'm reading with the Everyday Tarot and I'll be clarifying with the Numerology deck. And today is the August, is August the 27th, 2022. It's a Saturday, the day of Saturn. And we've got a couple of interesting transits today. We've got um, Sun and Virgo squaring Mars and Gemini. Now it, you can be quite critical here, um, particularly with the Mars and Gemini aspect. Gemini likes to be super investigative and also um, kind of really wanting to get down to the bottom of things. And when you've got the sun in um, Virgo squaring that, um, it gives us, you know, we may end up being super ultra mega critical. Um, look at that, four, four of pentacles as well. Um, so just pay attention to all of your actions um, on um, social media as well. You may find that you're not um, putting yourself across as you might want to. Um, or there may be just something that somebody's taken like a different way or a wrong way. So just, it just says here, like, do not leave any bad tracks. And I really, you know, just make sure you clear up all of your mess, basically. Uh, leave it all clear, leave it all clean. Um, you know, no bad feelings or anything like that. No kind of aggravation or, you know, just ease. We want ease here. Um, and then we've also got the um, new moon in Virgo. And here it's a really good day to set your goals and improve your routines. Um, what other healthy habits can you bring into your life to really help yourself? To help yourself be the best. Um, and to actually be the best version of yourself that you can be um, for everyone around you. Today is Saturday. So today is the law of Dharma in the seven spiritual laws of success. So this is how we really look at our own goals, our own um, aspirations, desires, and how that can be implemented in order to um, kind of create service for the world, which is really synonymous with um, this Virgo season and also these Virgo transits. Just making sure that we're really clear about what we're trying to communicate, how we're trying to do that, and also... Um, also just making sure that it's congruent with who we are as well, not compromising on that just because something else may come into the fray. Anyway, with that being said, let's crack on with the reading. Um, thank you so much to all of my returning subscribers and also for all of you that comment. Um, I really, really appreciate it. So let's get on. Dear Spirit, what messages would you like me to communicate to the collective today? Wow, we've got the Two of Cups. We've got the Six of Swords reversed. We've got the Emperor. And we've got the Page of Cups. The Nine of Cups. The Seven of Wands. The King of Cups. Hopefully you can see that. I hope that's all looking all right, my friends. I'm just double checking. Okay. Because these are little cards, we can take them. So we've got the Five of Cups reversed. Interesting. We've also got the Hanged Man. Yes, lovely. You can see that as well. And the Five of Pentacles reversed. We've also... Sorry, Five of Pentacles. Oh my God, and the Lovers. Right. Yeah. This is... Okay, I'm sorry to those of you who don't really follow like love relationships, but this is about them. I don't get... Because my, my collective readings are usually about, you know, self... And this is another thing as well, like we have to understand that our self is not just about, you know, even though we're looking at things with ourselves, it's about our relationships, how we, how we enter things with other people, how we, how we behave in relationships are go is going to be like the key thing to how we connect with each other and also with ourselves, sorry, how we connect with ourselves is going to be key in how we connect with other people, you know, no matter what, yeah? 
Um, everything is based on how we feel in interaction with other people. Um, and obviously we have things for ourselves, but we are social beings essentially, regardless of whether or not it's for love, platonic relationships, or any kind of relationships, um, you know, par parental friendships, um, brother and sister, you know, it's, it's, it's about them all. So here we've also got the two of pentacles. So what I'm getting from this, as I said, like there's a choice that's being made. It seems to me that there's an actual like, for, like a walking forward. There's, there's something here that wants to be made. It means what I'm seeing, if this isn't to do with love, this is to do with um, understanding a part of oneself that is coming together and making the choice to go forward with that and also to make choice with certain people that you have in your life, you know? Um, I do see it as a significant other. I do see it as somebody else. Um, because we do have the Page of Cups. We've also got the Seven of Wands reversed. No, Seven of Wands. And we have the King of Cups. So I think there's this sense of maturity that's going on. There may be a possibility that one of the party, if it is to do with a love relationship, or if there is two people in this party, um, well, between the two of you, there's a, a page and there's somebody who's younger, trying to kind of like look at the opportunities that are available, but then you've also got the King of Cups where it's almost like a mature sense. Actually, you know what I'm getting? I'm not really getting a person. I'm getting a mindset. I'm getting two different mindsets. Um, so here's the kind of aspiration, where you want to go, where you want to be, how you want to be within this relationship. We've also got like the Emperor here, which means like an actual sense of assertiveness, dominance, and um, also just a real kind of um, mature sense about the whole thing. Because it seems to me like this could be, um, you know, for a relationship, something happening. And I mean, you know, you've got the, both the, 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 the biggest love cards that you can have in the deck. Surrounding them, we don't have those cards. Um, but we do have the nine as well, the nine of cups, which says to me a wish. So it seems to me like two, both parties, excuse me, I might sneeze in a minute. Both parties in this relationship really want to do something. They really want to make it work. They want to make something happen. Um, as I said, we've got cups here. Lots. Of, we've got cups, lots of cups um, and the lovers. So I do think that this is to do with a love relationship. Um, but there's also this sense of like curiosity, um, but there's the maturity as well. What we're missing here is the female aspect. So there's something to do with missing the, um, the there's something to do with the divine feminine because the lovers, even though it's the lovers, it's a, it's a female, it's a male card, you know, it's Gemini. We've also got the emperor, we've got the king of cups, we've got the page of cups, which is kind of like the immature female. So it seems to me that there needs to be more nurturing here. Now this could be with yourself, you know, if you are single, this is about you being more nurturing towards yourself. Um, and I think, I think people around you are really going to help that. I think there are going to be people that are going to help you to, to kind of do that. But there's some kind of element of a journey that you need to still work on. You need to still move away from. And you also need to let go. The five of cups reversed. I always see the five of cups reversed as a, as a you know, as a two of cups, because the two cups are still upright. It means that the person is looking towards these two cups. And also, because he's looking towards that, I don't know, I just got the thought that there's a real sense of building a future together, a real sense of building something here, particularly with the emperor. This is about really looking at the, at how this relationship can actually like move, help you move forward. And help you like get everything you've always wanted but there is something about a sense of perspective that needs to be changed here and particularly with the seven of wands the old ghosts need to go in the bin you need to stop fighting these ghosts you need to stop you need to be really clear and assertive with what you want with a loving attitude and i think that's what these these two are telling me they're telling me that there's there needs to be this assertion this clarity but it needs to be done with a real sense of like love because if it's not, then it could be misconstrued. I don't see any kind of like negative kind of um, connotations here. I just see like this is almost like a work in progress. 
and there's also this sense of like there's, there's a bit of fear and the fear is not allowing oneself to actually look through the window and walk through the door with this five of pentacles it's like oh there's this opportunity here see it oh actually I'm gonna like fight the ghosts of my past and while I'm fighting the ghosts of my past I'm just gonna like be all like oh my god everything's like a bit uh you know a bit like um it's poverty consciousness so it's, it's it's like a sense of lack which is coming from the five and you don't need it because it's wands and it is quick because you know you've got fire but the pentacles it's it, that's an old problem and with this six here which is five six seven that says to me that there's something that you still need to you still need to get over and you still need to walk out you walk away from I think this will happen by you changing your perspective on here. You have to take some time out, take some time away, take some time maybe by yourself or something that's just going to help you to kind of recalibrate how you interact with others. Now this could easily be, this, this actually really works well with the initial transit that we were talking about in the sun in Virgo squaring Gemini in Mars, I think it was. Um, let me just double check. Yeah. Because Mars in Gemini is, is quite is quite is quite aggressive, um, you know. There's this sense of like needing to be right, or knowing that you're right, or knowing that you want something. Um, and I think if you approach this in a way that that actually helps you to not kind of come across in any kind of belligerent way or fearful way, because these these cards are fearful. Not so much the six, but like the seven and the five. They're like you know this is like. This is kind of after the four, after having everything, you know, the king that has everything and is holding on to everything. Then you've got the, the five, which is kind of like, oh, well, I've got all of these things, but I'm not going to look at them, you know. And then we go into the five of cups as well. So this, there's a sense of getting over the disappointment. Overall, this is a really good reading about you changing your perspective on things. And once you change your perspective, the things your perspective is on changes, you know. The thing, what's that saying? Yeah, um... I'll use it for the title of this video, but when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And that is what's happening here. Because it seems to me like you've got some really, really good, like, unit, like there's a beautiful amalgamation that's going on between you and friends. You know, I, I don't know, you may have found like a, a really good relationship with someone. It doesn't matter if it's, it's I don't think it has to be romantic, but yeah, I think there's a big emotional investment here. And I think it will help you to like find the, the relationship that you're really meant to have um, if you want that. If not, then uh, you know, you, you, you'll definitely feel better within yourself and I think that you'll end up finding more people that will be on your level. Um, maybe one or two. So yeah, that's what we get. Let's see what the numerology has to say. I'm only going to take this one out because that one turned over. It's parenting. Nine. Parenting reversed. So I'm going to come back to this thing um, where all of our relationships, platonic and also, um, and also romantic, are only ever... Um, they're, they're made because we have... Because of how our relationship with our parents are. Um... And that's something that can really help us um, in understanding how we are. And I think when we realize, when we rely on other people to like parent ourselves or do something for us or you know just get into that space where um, where like we're expecting that our expectations of the other person is actually a lot more. I think that's where things can go a bit funny. So. The key here is to like notice that, step back and see what's going on because yeah I'm getting that here, I'm getting that. We've got no female energy here as well, we've got no, we've got no uh, queens, no empress, no nothing, it's just like, and it's interesting how we have the king of cups, you know, the king in the water element, which is the female element, so there's a lot of like thinking, seems to me and also with the this sword here, but there's a lot of there's a lot of like, there's a lot of like action that's being taken 
rather than this female approach. And I think, you know, anything that's to do with your mother, anything that's to do with mothering yourself in a way that helps you feel cared for and nurtured is going to really help you in this situation. Um, just trying to think. I mean, it's a very well balanced reading in the respect of the suits. Like we have all of the elements here, but we have strong male. There's just really strong male. I don't see if I don't feel a lot of female. Um, so it could be a relationship between two brothers. Um, it could be a male gay couple. I'm just thinking of the, the energy. It could be like, yeah, it could be that. Or it could be the fact that there's just a lot of male, um, male energy that's going around, which is the initiator. And sometimes we have to go back to the receptive. And I think that's the whole thing about parenting. It's the whole thing about holding the container and allowing things to be and allowing our, us to be able to, to, um, to hold that space for people and hold it so that, it's, um, so that people feel safe, you know, rather than, you know, go, 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 you know. And I, I really think that there's a sense, and I think that go, 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 go kind of attitude is, is synonymous with the Six of Swords being reversed. It means that the, the water can't be crossed because there's still this kind of mindset that's happening because it's kind of like, oh, what's going on now? Why, why is this not happening? What's going on? There's a bit of worry happening here. And also like, oh, well, if, you know, it's, it's, there's almost like a lack of appreciation of what's actually going on as well. This is why the, um, the, the perspective needs to change. But otherwise, the choice has been made. Beautiful things are developing. Your wishes are coming true. You're overcoming any kind of previous disappointments. You're starting to understand some kind of like, you know, um, newness and also education in respect of how you feel about things and also being open to new things. You're coming at it from a really mature perspective, a really grounded, mature, ruling perspective. You know what you want, you know how you want it, you know where you want to go. You know, the emperor is there. There could be something to do with the father and son as well here going on here. This could be between father and son. I'm just, as I said, father and son, I'm just seeing males, a lot of males. But as I said, even if it's not men, it could be like females, but who are embodying, embodying this energy. I, to I definitely resonate with this. So, um, yeah. The advice is parent yourself a little bit. Give yourself a little bit of mothering, a little bit of nurturing. We need the divine feminine here. And this is what this is about, you know. It's about embracing that divine feminine. Today, Saturday, um, we have black stones, but I would think probably rainbow obsidian is, is something that really is beautiful because, you know, you have that black and then you have that, that beautiful shiny um, nature where it just turns different colours. So, yeah, that might be something to think about. Anyway, my darlings, I hope you enjoyed this reading and thank you for bearing with me being in this other um, location. Um, but uh, I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do like and subscribe for more videos I upload every day. And I'm really sorry that this one is late. But um, yeah, some interesting messages here and I will see you in the next reading. Take care, my darlings, and see you tomorrow. Bye.